Hello, this is Robin Norgren. Thanks for joining me over at Creativity Montessori and the Meaning of Life. You can find me over on Instagram at Josie's Art School or on my website, josiesartschool.com. That's J O S E Y S A R T S C H O O L. And then I also run a company called Bright Child Montessori, where I take um, my expertise as a Montessori primary teacher, and I create daily lesson plans to take the overwhelm out of being a Montessori teacher on a daily basis. Uh, Let's get started with today's segment on your creative piece, finding and deepening your creative voice while connecting with God. So in, 19, in, uh, in 2009, I wrote down my top 10 time wasters, is what I called them, of the reality shows I was watching at the time. Number one was Project Runway. I would sit and wonder how you could get that proficient with a sewing machine and who designs their clothes and why wouldn't you just go to the store? But I loved it. Number two was Top Chef. Basically, the only ingredient I was familiar with um, they, that they used was chicken, but I loved watching that one too. Number three was America's best, uh, next top model. I would watch this and root for the plus size model who was a size 10. Number four was Hell's Kitchen. Okay. I would have to sneak and watch this one because my husband hated it. He said he had flashbacks of being a cook at Marie Callender's, uh, restaurant chain in the U S on mother's day. And that is why we do not go to restaurants on that day. Uh, Number five was another food network show, Chefology. I'd love to hear um, that either Paula Dean or Rachel Ray actually never went to culinary school, but it did not make me want to cook any more than I normally would. Number six was the next food network star. Okay, is this the fourth cooking show I mentioned? I promise I do not like to cook. Number seven was Top Design, an interior design show that was a bit over the top and not as witty as most shows in this genre. But hey, it was replaying on Bravo, so I watched it. Number eight, nine, and ten. Okay, this is kind of embarrassing. It was all forms of the real housewives. Orange County, Atlanta, New York. Um, Yeah, anyway, so that's my list. I'd love to see yours. Um, I was still clearly in a place where I felt stranded in my own life. I was not adjusting well to full-time motherhood and add to that single motherhood since my husband was deployed for long periods of time. I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, and yet I felt trapped there. We lived in a small apartment, so I felt I had to constantly be on the go so I would not go stir-crazy, yet we were on an incredibly tight budget. Weekends were the worst. I was lonely. Now that I had begun to crochet, I would sit and watch television and crochet. The problem was I created the same things over and over again. Scarves and hats. Muted colors. Muted life. Until I went to my local craft store and they were clearing out novelty yarns. They were different colors and textures of yarns that might give these projects of mine a little bit of a pop. I did not know what to do with them, but the practical side of me could not pass up the sale. These are the same yarns that later generated the tote that I dreamed about. Here's a quote from E.E. E. Cummings. Suppose life is an old man carrying flowers on his head. Slowly I began to move forward, but I was still feeling boxed in. I did not know that a change was coming. Here's some questions for you to ponder. Describe a time when you felt something you created was truly inspired, prompted by something within or outside of yourself. What has God begun to show you about your creative life? Are you sensing some immediate changes that you need to make with your time, energy, commitments? What are your thoughts about art as therapy? And where do you find inspiration? What do you think about that E.E. Cummings quote? Suppose that life is an old man wearing flowers on his head. Are you finding a rhythm to your creative journey? I felt like my life 
moving uh, on this continuum between wanting a more creative life and yet not feeling like this was a valid identity for me. I still did not understand, God, understand God's orchestration behind it. Up to this point, the vision for the tote bag still felt a bit odd. The idea of a muse, as some people call it, or inspiration as others called it, did not feel like it pertained to my situation. It felt like a fluke, like I imagined the whole thing. I had never considered myself to be creative. I was feeling like I was mimicking my mom's ho hobby. I did not necessarily love the act of crocheting. I loved the meditative aspect of it. I loved having something to show for my efforts. I seemed to be more settled than I was many months ago, but I felt like I had no outlet. But I kept this outlet a secret, for the most part, afraid of what people would say about this new obsessive behavior of mine. But I did feel like God was closer to me, and that somehow this act was making me, quote, okay again on the inside. Around the same time, I reconnected with a friend who has an art degree. And we began to get together and allow our creative activities to be the focal point for our gatherings, creating in community. Hmm, what an interesting idea. Little did I know that this is an idea that's been around for centuries. This decision felt like a good next step for me. My friend was honing her skills in bookmaking and was soon turning out stunning handmade journals. I began to talk to her about this site I heard about called Etsy. Her products seemed like a gorgeous fit. I loved watching as she prepared to take the leap to have her own online craft business. Description writing, photographs, pricing, dreaming, researching, encouraging. I loved every minute of watching her business come together. Have there ever been any activities that you have truly disliked after trying them? Was there anything that you see God teaching you through that very act of trying? Did it somehow lead you to something else you ended up enjoying? Are there thoughts, words, pictures that are coming together as you work through this uh, prompt called Declare Peace? Are you finding connection between your inner life and your art? Are you finding a particular creative medium that you especially find more beneficial in calming your anxiety, doubt, and fears? So I have definitely looked at my life over the last, I guess, 10 years now since this um, book was written. And I see that there's a lot of um, pieces to a puzzle that are coming together. Even as I sit here this morning, I'm on my way to do um, a sub job at uh, a school in my neighborhood. And I'm still amazed by how I got into teaching. Many of the reasons why I'm in teaching now is because I started working on um, this creative outlet of mine 10 years ago. And it has caused me to be able to be brave enough to do some amazing things. But just like any new thing, there's, there's, a, there's a sense of terror with it. What if this is the time you fail or you're found out as a fraud? And you have to be willing to still move forward even in that fear. Because that fear has a way of producing either the best in you or the worst in you. And you got to choose. So, as I prepare to walk into this new um, next step for me, I invite you to think about what has creativity meant to you in your life? The Montessori piece in all this is being willing to have your whole person come into a new endeavor. Many times we want to put ourselves in a box. And if we have children, we tell them not to be in a box. And yet we show them that it's safer to stay in a box. 
So I challenge you today, as you think about these questions that I've posed, and I invite you to go back to the other um, previous episodes so you can see the chain of uh, events coming together, that you really start to think about what is it that you're trying to find out about yourself? Thanks so much for stopping by.